How is everybody doing today? Beautiful weather, beautiful food, amazing wine. How many people already got a little buzz going? Couple? You can be proud of it. It's all right. You can be happy. It's a food and wine festival. All right. So as you heard, my name is Sean O'Neill. I did win season seven of MasterChef on Fox with that, that guy, um, Gordon, Gordon Ramsay, that guy. Um, I like to start off my demos and let you guys know that he's really not an asshole. Like, he's, he's actually one of the nicest people that you will ever meet. Um, he's uh, become an amazing mentor to me, and I'm very honored to be able to travel around the country and kind of share my experiences on MasterChef and uh, kind of what took me to MasterChef and what's been happening after MasterChef. So if you have questions, feel free to ask. Um, today we are going to do one of the dishes that was kind of an early dish for me when I really started getting interested in food. Um, I started roasting garlic and playing around with garlic recipes, and obviously one of those, those transitions for me was into things like risottos and simple, simplified delicious, right? Um, so this I've been making for years. Um, who's made roasted garlic before? Anybody? Anybody roast garlic? I, I do it all the time, and my friends say it is my trademark scent. Um, my house always smells like it. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but uh, I'll take it. Um, so yeah, we were going to roast off garlic. I saw a lot of hands come up, so you guys obviously probably know how to do that. The way I do mine is I just cut the tops off. I uh, put it in some tin foil, drizzle of olive oil, salt, pepper into a 300 degree oven for about an hour. You know when it's done because your whole house stinks. Good stink, but it stinks, right? So we've already roasted off some garlic, so we're going to get into kind of the, the bones of this dish. Um, and we're going to start off with making this risotto. Uh, these induction burners are amazing. They're very high tech, and I've been out of the DJ industry for a while, so my techno technology skills have diminished slightly. But I think we got it here. It almost feels like a Daft Punk style turntables up here. It's weird. All right, so we're going to get our uh, pan going for our rice. Um, we'll get some olive oil in this pan, and we're going to get some shallots. We've already got some pre chopped shallots. So, nice and small. I like to chop them right around the size of the rice so you don't. You don't get a big chunk of shallot. You don't get that big oniony type of taste, right? So keep them about the size of the rice. We're going to let this guy warm up just a little bit. And we're also going to cook off some mushrooms at the same time. You can use any type of mushrooms. I like chanterelles, but they're a little bit on the pricier side. So we just went with some creminis, some stuff like that. Any really mushrooms that are in season. I wouldn't use dried mushrooms for this dish. They have kind of a weird consistency. They're a weird texture when you bring them back to life, when you rehydrate them. So I usually go with... Uh, uh, chanterelle, morels are a little too fancy for this one. I would save the morels for just kind of a quick sear and something like that. So, all right. Any questions so far? Everybody on the same page? Anybody have a question about MasterChef or anything like that? Anybody been dying to know anything? Are we all that buzzed? <laughs> Everybody? Yes, I like her style. She's loud and she's proud. Nice. All right. So, well, nobody brought me any wine, so that's very nice of everybody. Yes, ma'am. On the show, so there's a bit, there's a long process uh, involved in MasterChef. Um, you start off with an open casting call in your hometown or wherever, if you drive or wherever. Um, but then it's a lot. I mean, it's a lot of background checks. I mean, drug tests, blood tests, psychology tests. You know, you, you go for a long time. Like, if they're going to stick you in a hotel with a bunch of other wackos, they got to make sure that all the wackos are the same kind of wacko he is, right? <laughs> so it's a, it's a long process, but it's a lot of sending recipes. It's a lot of... Um, you know, them kind of questioning, sending you questions to answer to kind of find out your knowledge level. They do a really good job of finding out or finding the best home cooks in America. I mean, my season had 36,000 people audition for, for MasterChef. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. What's that? I don't know much about it. I mean, I, I would personally, I would assume they get a little bit of help. Um, but I'd be honest with you, I, I don't know. I know we don't. We don't get any help at all. Like when, it, when you see Gordon Ramsay say go, that's go time. That's when we start. We don't get any recipes. We don't get any prior knowledge of what we're making. When, it's, when he says go, when he says cook, it's time to cook. So I saw a hand come up over here. So you are allowed to bring five cookbooks, whether that be your own or something else, but you can only have those in your room. You can't have those on set. And then also the... Um, you know, the books you see on set, those are real books. We have access to them in our downtime, but our downtime is few and far between. And we don't ever get to go and access books like right before a challenge or anything like that. So it's really, it's stored knowledge, right? 
So for me, when I went on the show, I knew that I was weak in baking, right? I knew I was weak in baking, so I spent three months baking my ass off, cakes, pies, it all resides right here. It all lives right here now, but I fattened all my friends up by about 10 pounds. Like we all, it, it, it was a lot of cakes. It was a lot of pies. It was a lot of cheesecakes. But I went on MasterChef and I won every single baking challenge, right? So, you, oh, thank you. That's the first time I got an applause for that one. Yeah. It was crazy. I made this pretty little paint cake. I still take shit from it for my friends. Um, so back to the recipe, though. But let's get some, we're going to get the rice in here. Um, I like to get the rice into a hot pan because it toasts off the rice. So what you, what's that? Shallots. The shallots, yeah. Oh, let's see here. Now I'm, now I'm having issues with this thing again. Hold on. All right. Well, we're going to see if that says hot, but where's my guy? <laughs> I'm getting the flash in again. There we go. All right. It was my fault. User error. User error. We're good. Okay. I got you. All right. So let me try this one while you're standing here. Hold on. He's running off on me. I got, I got it. I got it. See, I'm figuring it out. I'm a fast learner. All right. We're good. Okay. So another thing I did, uh, <laughs> another thing I did is I went ahead and put the stock in a pan. So two things. You want to toast off your rice with a risotto. You want to get into a hot pan, toast it off. And what that does is it opens up those little teeny pores in the rice, right? So when you put these mushrooms and this roasted garlic and the chicken stock in there, it just sucks up all that beautiful flavor that you're building here, right? Another thing, you want to put your stock in a pan and get it to like a little bit of a simmer. You don't want to put cold stock into risotto because you just made all this, uh, th you just did all this work to open up those pores, right? You put cold stock in there, it's just going to just shrivel it kind of right back up, right? We all know about cold and shrivel and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> that was the first joke. I'm glad I got a laugh. That was the, that was the first time on that one. See, so testing new material on you guys. So, all right. So we got our, our rice toast in. Did I hear somebody say something? Did I hear a question? Oh, you got one the last one. I'm going over here this time. You got the next one, though. Yes, ma'am. They're different. There's a learning curve. I, lo I love the way that it heats up. I mean, it heats up like that. Oh, the count the, this countertop? Oh, oh, the countertop. I thought she said. I mean, it's it's a countertop. It's a nice countertop. Second question. Yes, we got samples coming out for you in just a little bit. Oh, what I'm cooking now? Uh, I don't know if they have the insurance for that. I don't know. I don't know. It's possible. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. All right. And uh, your question. Uh, about three and a half months. Three and a half months of seclusion. Like how long does the finale take? Just the finale? Uh, about two days. Because it's usually two courses one day and then one course. So we actually did one course the first day and then two courses the second day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of it's family, friends, I mean, stuff like that. You know, I mean... It's still, it's still a TV show, so a lot of those audience members are extras that answer Craigslist ads and stuff like that um, because it is still a show, but they have to all sign their lives away. You know, we had a $5 million non-disclosure agreement on the contestants, right? So everybody signs that. You walk into the MasterChef world, you're signing it. You say something, they're going to sue your ass quickly, <laughs> quickly. <laughs> so. All right, guys, so we've got our rice toasting off here. We're going to go ahead and uh, get some mushrooms going. You could put your mushrooms straight into this risotto, but I kind of like to sear them off a little bit first, give them that kind of nice crispy edges, uh, add a little bit of sherry vinegar. That is nice and warm. We're good to go. All right, so we've kind of gotten a little bit of color on our rice here, and now we're going to start adding some stock. I like to put in about a cup at a time. And we're going to cook this until almost all the water is gone out of this stock or out of this uh, risotto, right? Because you want it to soak up all that goodness. Oh, I forgot a step. I forgot to deglaze. I usually deglaze with sherry vinegar, so we'll add that right now. So I like sherry vinegar. Some people use wine. Wine is kind of the traditional classic deglazing with a risotto. I think sherry vinegar brings a little bit more sweetness to the party um, and a little bit more acidity to the party. So uh, I use sherry vinegar. I use it in the risotto and in the mushrooms. And we are going to get some mushrooms rolling right now. 
I'm getting the hang of this. There we go. All right, so a little bit of olive oil into our pan for the mushrooms. Uh, in Italy, you'll see the risotto maker sits there and stirs and stirs and is always constantly working the risotto. I feel like you need to give it a little bit of time, stir it maybe every two minutes. As long as it's not sticking to the pan, you're pretty good. But you need to give it a little bit of time to work up that, uh, or you know, soak up all that liquid and all that stock and all that goodness that we have. All right, we're gonna take our roasted garlic now and we're just gonna put it in a little bowl and kind of make like a roasted garlic paste, right? Oh, some paper still on that. Yep, you can eat this one actually because there's still some paper on this garlic and I'm just gonna put it in. <laughs> this is the magic of TV. You can make some mistakes and it's okay. All right, so get some mushrooms in here. We got our oil nice and high. Did you see how hot fast that heated up right there? I mean, that, that is the, the main benefit of an induction. Like they, these things heat up and get nice and gnarly hot really fast, right? So we're gonna smush up some, uh, some of this garlic. I see the paper, so I'm gonna take it out. Put it right there. Oh, there's a couple in there. That's all right. Just get rid of it. Just mash this up. You know, I love roasted garlic, but I don't want big cloves. I don't want that big chunk of garlic going in my mouth at any time. So get a little bit more stock in there. All right. We're going to pretend like this is nice and well mashed. And garlic goes into the pan. Oh, now your attention is just going to be gone. Your attention's gone now. I'm gonna sit. I'm just gonna pause for a few minutes, let you guys have a little snack. All right. So give these mushrooms a little toss. You don't want to burn them, but you want to get that nice little sear on them. <clears throat> you like that? Oh, I like that. I like to hear that. All right. So lemon zest, parsley. Shea vinegar. All right, how's everybody doing? You enjoying so far? What's that? The tang, a little bit of a tanginess. Is, it's cherry vinegar. Yeah. All right. Any questions now that some of you have tasted it? When did I know I was going on the show? You have a. It depends on the season. I had about three months to prepare. Um, that's when I did all that baking nonstop. Um, it depends. Like this last season was pretty rushed. You know, it, it just depends on airing schedules and stuff like that. I had about three months notice. Um, it took about a year from when I first auditioned to when I got to L.A., but I had about three months notice before I left to go to L.A. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> everything. When we land in L.A., they take our cell phones away that minute, right? So you have no access to the outside world. You have a 10-minute phone call a week on a burner phone, right? 10 minutes a week on a burner phone, and then 30 minutes a week online to pay bills and stuff like that. I mean, it's, it's tough. It's, it's one of the hardest things, if not the hardest thing, that I have ever done in my entire life. You know, people have to quit their jobs to do MasterChef. Relationships go through some pretty hard times. What's that? Uh, no, no, only, only the winner. I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, that's, you, you have to be ready to go and, and not be making money for a while. It's tough. It's, it's very, very hard. You have to be dedicated. Like, I know it's weird to say three and a half months is dedication, but you're literally removed from everything you've ever known, right? I mean, the dreams of effing Gordon Ramsay that I had, the, the nightmares of this guy screaming at me, like, they lasted about three months after MasterChef. Like, nonstop. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. But it was, it was hard, you know. And it, it's worth it for everybody that's on there. That anybody that makes it to the top 20, they can go out and, and fulfill their dreams and follow their dreams in the culinary world. It opens that big of a door, right. And it's, it's amazing to be able to, to have that opportunity because, you know, a lot of people want to be in food. Food nourishes, right. Food feeds the masses if we can. And a lot of people want to be in that, but they don't know how, right? And this kind of gives you that foray into the world in a very extreme setting, right? I mean, you're not many people are going to have Gordon Ramsay screaming down their throats um, it, when they're learning to, or becoming a chef or anything like that. But 
it, uh, it's, a, it's a crazy experience. It was definitely rewarding, and, and almost everybody from my season has moved into some type of culinary, except for David. Uh, I do stuff like this. I travel the country. This is day 196 on the road for me since uh, last January 1st. Um, so in about a year and four, three months, this is day 196 on the road. Uh, I do everything from, uh, I'm on the Macy's Culinary Council, so I do uh, demos for Macy's around the country. Um, <clears throat> I'll give you guys an inside scoop. I actually just signed a brand ambassadorship deal with Newcastle, uh, Newcastle Beer. I'm designing uh, 10 recipes for them throughout the summer. Um, you might see life-size stand-ups of me in some liquor stores and grocery stores. If you do, please draw a mustache on me, right? And send me pictures. I feel like that's the equivalent of, like, high success, right? Like, when you get that, and a curly one, like one of those little curly ones. Please, I beg of you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they'll arrest you for that one. I'll, I'll give you a note, like a teacher-parent teacher note. All right, so we're going to get a little bit more stock in here. And we're going to get some Parmesan cheese in here. I think it, <clears throat> we can go ahead and add our mushrooms here in just a second. I think I keep moving the pan off, and that's why I'm losing some of my heat. All right, any other questions out there about the recipe now that some of you have tried it? Everybody good on this side? This is my quiet side over here, huh? You guys like it? Good? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. The Rebel what? Oh, um, yeah. Uh, I, I think I'm like Alton Brown in this sense. When I think when something's made for one single purpose, I try to avoid it. So I have not tried it. Um, since I'm not at Macy's, I probably wouldn't buy it <laughs> personally. Um, I, I just think there's better ways to do it. Like this is an easier way to do it, not, not spend the money. But it may work wonders. You know, you can even make risotto in a, a pressure cooker. You know, there's recipes to do it that way. Um, doesn't really have the same consistency. But I, I think a good old skillet's the way to go on that one. Nice question, though. All right. Oh, is it falling down? Sorry. You'd think I'd done this before. Jeez. There we go. All right. There we go. Now we're back, right? You hear me? Good? Cool? I didn't blow out anybody's eardrums, right? Everybody good? All right. All right. So our risotto's looking pretty good. We're going to add our, we already added our Parmesan, right? No, we didn't. We're going to add our Parmesan cheese. And this gives us that nice, kind of smooth, sticky consistency that we like in a risotto. We can add our mushrooms in here now that they've got in a nice little char on them. We are going to add some parsley. Just a little bit of parsley. We want to get a little bit of that freshness, that, that herbaceousness to kind of work in here. And then finally, we're going to add some lemon zest. And lemon zest gives you those essential oils without give, having to use all the juice. And it gives you a little bit of a different flavor profile. All right? All right? <clears throat> and now we are in our kind of last stage, and that's just kind of stirring this, letting it finish up, letting it all kind of come to one kind of uniform mixture here. All right. All right. How are we doing out there? Everybody good? Everybody need more wine at this point? All right? You're starting to get to that need more wine phase. You have a question? <laughs> um, I have to wait for my contract to kind of run down with MasterChef before I can do reality type stuff. Um, I am working on something with Sony Originals um, to kind of bring in the music background. Because, you know, for those of you who don't know MasterChef, I was a DJ for 20 years um, in Vegas, all, all over. So I, I, that was one of the things that helped me with MasterChef was those high pressure situations. I've always loved to cook. My cookbook collection is just freaking massive, right? And as a DJ, like, you know, I... I I had a lot of free time. I worked two days a week, you know, especially in Vegas. Like, we have, it's a decent career in Vegas, right? So I worked two days a week, and I was just at home busting my ass in the kitchen all the time. Yeah, MasterChef's all for home cooks. MasterChef, you can't have culinary experience. Now I'm not home anymore, yeah. <laughs> now I'm on the road. Now I'm best stage cook. <laughs> It's been awesome. You know, my wife actually does all my bookings. Uh, she's my manager. She's my, my right-hand man in everything. She, she, she is. She's right back here at the back. All the heads turn. <laughs> we just got married about three weeks ago, too. So, Got him. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. Well, 36,000 is how many people auditioned for my season of MasterChef across the country. 
Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's nuts. I think almost every season is in between like 30 and 38, something like that. They usually do uh, castings in about 10 to 12 cities, and every city, I mean, my season was the first time they'd ever come to Vegas, so out of the top 40 that go on the show and compete for aprons, nine of us were from Las Vegas, which was a really, it, it made me feel really proud of my city too, to show people that that great food in Vegas is not just in a $300 per person restaurant, right? The people at home are learning from these amazing chefs in Vegas, right? So, yes, ma'am. Oh, man, I have so many. Um, a couple that I took on MasterChef uh, was French Laundry Cookbook, because if you have it, why the hell not take it on MasterChef, right? Um, that was actually one of the books that scared my competition, because a lot of people came in with, no offense to these people, but Giada at home and stuff like that, you know, Fabio's 15-minute Italian meals. No, I love the guy. I love the guy. Um, you know, but it, I, took, I took books like that. I took uh, Modernist Cuisine at Home, which, if you don't know, is a book about this freaking big and, like, this wide. But it's, it, and there's not that many recipes in it. It's just a very extravagant book. It was, it's by Nathan Mervold, which, if you know Nathan Mervold, he was a, uh, the Microsoft chief operating officer for years and dropped everything to go into food and research food science. A amazing man, create, really creative genius. But um, yeah, I took books like that. I took Richard Blaze's Try This at Home because it had some really nice uh, tricks for me to easily do in an hour time frame. Yes, sir? The Herring Dictionary? The Herring Dictionary? I have, <clears throat> I have not heard of that one. Oh, yeah? Nice. Very nice. I'll have to check that one out for sure. Herring Dictionary. I will take a look into that one. All right, guys. So, I mean, you've tasted it now, but, I mean, you guys, if you watch MasterChef, you know that I, I was big on plating. I wanted everything to be pretty. Sometimes it doesn't have to be pretty. A risotto is one of those dishes that it just got to be delicious, right? It's just got to be delicious. So sometimes I'll put some microgreens on here, maybe a little bit of a, a, a couple of little pieces of arugula. But to be honest, it's pretty damn good just by itself. So I usually serve this just like this. Um, if I'm doing other types of risottos, <clears throat> sometimes I'll do a squid ink risotto. Does that scare anybody, right? Squid ink, does anybody get thrown off by that? All right, see, we're, we're coming to a point in America food where we're not scared by stuff anymore, which is great. Um, I don't think it's a trend. I think we're going back to what we did thousands of years ago, right? It's not a trend. We're coming full circle, right? We've been wasting so much food, especially in America. In other countries, they eat, they eat everything. They eat the stuff that I'm not even going to talk about, you know? So it, I don't find it as a trend. I find it as chefs are respecting ingredients more and more, and they, they want to take, you know, we, we, we as Americans waste 40 fucking percent of our food, right? And I'm guilty of it. I'm guilty of it too. I, I buy, I overbuy at the grocery store, and it, it rots, especially being on the road so much, you know. So using everything is—it's just showing respect, and it's—it's it's literally going back to a thousand years ago when we literally did we ate everything or we used every piece. So I, I don't find it as trendy. I mean, there's always going to be that one or two ingredient that that has its moment in the sun: pork belly, you know, cheeks are are having a little renaissance. Uh, bone marrow, which is amazing, which is just delicious, and it's so many uses for it, sauces, stocks, bone broth, you know, a lot of people who are scared of just eating a bone, eating out of the bone, they go to their faux restaurants, and they order a big, you know, bowl, and that's bone marrow broth, that's bone marrow, right, so, you know, everything, everything has its moment in the sun, but I think using all the, every part of the animal. It's more of a respect thing at this point than anything else. That, that's my personal opinion. So from what I see, yeah. Any other questions out there? No, you guys are quiet. Yes, ma'am, you are an active one. You get the gold star. <laughs> um, 
we've got some concepts in mind. I've got a lot of projects going on. Um, you know, all these guys, Fabio, Richard, they've been doing this for years, right? They have an established team. Um, I have an amazing right-hand woman, but as far as the culinary goes, I don't have the people that I, I would be I would be comfortable leaving a restaurant to be on the road as much as I am. And in Vegas right now, all right, so Vegas is an international city, right? So I can't rely on having a local or regional following or, or, or customer base, right? I have to get out and do stuff like this and build an international or national customer base. You know, we've been to Costa Rica. We've, I'm going to Italy in a couple months to do some similar stuff like this. So for me, I'm, I'm building a, a brand right now. And in a couple years, I'm going to be ready for that. Um, but right now, it's really about building a brand, learning. Like, I'm learning every single day. Um, I need to, to learn the business side of things. Like, obviously, I have her, and she's amazing. But it's still a learning process for me. So I'm, I'm, I'm the new kid on the block, right? Call me, call me uh, Jordan. <laughs> All right, any other questions out there, guys? Yes, ma'am. Who taught me how to cook? Everybody wants to hear me say my mom, but it wasn't. Yeah, um, <laughs> right. You know, I, I do have a I have one dish for that my mom made when I was a kid that I put in the cookbook that I still make frequently. My mom cooked with love, and she cooked almost every night for us. But she was a very 70s, 80s mom home cook. Like there was a lot of canned shit. All right. There was a lot of frozen fish sticks. There was a lot of stuff like that, which was great. And I could always tell when she was mad at us when we w like weren't sitting around the table the night before because the next night was always fish stick night, right? So we weren't at the dinner table one night. The next night was always fish stick night regardless. But, you know, my parents weren't, I mean, we, we went to nice restaurants when I was a kid. I traveled around doing sports a lot, but they never really cooked at home. My dad worked for the United States Department of Agriculture, so he was up at work at 3 o'clock in the morning and, you know, asleep by 6, 7 o'clock at night most nights. My mom was a school teacher. She now teaches severe and profound handicapped students. Um, so conflicting schedules. It was, it was tough for her, um, but yeah, we, we ate okay. Um, I didn't have a medium rare steak until I was like 18 or 19. Like we were a Midwell household, which I have no clue why. Like it's crazy, but yeah, we, were, uh, we, were, uh, we weren't on a food island, but we were kind of, kind of on a food island, yeah. I grew up in Brevard, North Carolina too, right? How many people have heard of that place? Yeah. Brevard, North Carolina, yeah, one, we got one, right? One, one in the entire room. Can you imagine how many sushi places we had in the 90s, right? So, yeah, I mean, we, we, had, we had El Chapala Mexican restaurant. That was the hot place to go. We didn't have any sushi. We didn't have any stuff like that. So for me, it was really cookbooks. It was really, you know, I hated school, but all of a sudden, I, when I maybe was 22 years old, I started just falling in love with reading cookbooks. I read them like novels. And uh, it, the rest is, as you say, history. So, yeah. All right. Yes, sir. Oh yeah, like almost all my books, I, I, until I found those little, those little small post-it notes, right? I used to just make my own and just cut the shit out of post-it notes, and I have strips of post-it notes. So my, my bookshelf is probably, I don't know, it's, it's big. But every single book has little post-it notes, like diagonally in and out of it all the way down. Yeah, it's good. I mean, it, it, it it saves you the frustration of, of trying to find something, right? So as long as you know what book it's in, which I'm, yeah, like, uh, I'm not even there yet. I, at this point, I come home and I just throw them in the room. So, yeah. yeah. Any other questions, guys? You guys like the food? Yeah? All right. <clears throat> Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. We are going to be doing a cookbook signing over at the Marketplace, uh, my book, which I didn't even mention today. Jeez. Uh, my Modern American Table, we will have books for sale over there. I'd be happy to sign it, take some pictures, and give you guys a big hug. Share some love. All right, guys. Hey. <laughs>